Hello and welcome to Space Shark Teaches. I'm Sean, owner and lead developer of Space Shark Studios, and in this series we're going to be teaching Godot. In this lesson, we're going to start getting a little bit more complicated. I'm going to be teaching you about actions and conditions in order for us to have user input control the player. So just like before, we have the character. We have our player we can play. Here's our speed. Let's go into the script. Right now, all we have is a speed made into a vector that sets an axis velocity. We want more than that, however. We want the player to be able to control the player. We do that using something called an action. Drag action out here. You can see actions actually have a bunch of UI inputs. So ignore the fact that it says UI Think of it more like accept is your enter key. Down, left, right, up. Those are all of your arrow keys on your keyboard. That sounds like exactly what we need. So let's go ahead and do right because the character is going to the right anyway. Next up, we actually need to use something called conditions or conditionals, depending on which system you're using. Here they call it conditions. This is a, if X, do this, otherwise do this. In this case, X is going to be a Boolean, which means a true or false. As you can see, this says bool, which means it's a Boolean. And this says bool. So, drag that in and now what this means you can see there's a mode for pressed released just pressed and just released pressed and released will run constantly just pressed and just released will run once so we want pressed which means you are holding down the right arrow key so if the right arrow key is held down that makes this true, which means we want the player to move, right? We still have speed, all of that stuff stays, but now we have this action that says, when I press the right arrow key, I want the player to move. Let's go and make this faster again because it was kind of slow. And let's see what this looks like. So I'm not doing anything. And the second I press the right arrow, it goes. Uh-oh. Letting go doesn't seem to do anything. That's because when this is set, it sets the velocity, which means that the velocity will continue being 50, even if I let it go. That doesn't seem like what we want, is it? So let's make another set axis velocity, right? This time we say it's going to be zero and zero to say we want you to have no velocity. And if I don't have this pressed, I want you to have no velocity. Let's see what happens here. And when I press it, it goes. When I release it, nothing happens. So the reason why this is happening is because we're actually using this wrong. It speeds up a bit. The way that we're using this wrong is we're setting a velocity on something that is actually meant to use forces because a rigid body is like Think a basketball or a soccer ball. You don't make a ball roll on the ground by yelling, go 10 miles an hour. You do it by kicking it. As you can see, we actually have apply impulse, add force. Kicking it 
would be what happens in this case. So let's go ahead and say, all right, every time I've just pressed right, I want you to go right in whatever this is. Just ignore offset for now. So now every time I press right once, it should nudge it like it's a ball. And ignore the fact that it's still going. This is right. Um, as you can see, I think we screwed up somewhere on the gravity. Now that we have gravity again, it'll work like an actual ball. So nudge, 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 kick, 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 kick. Hopefully you can hear my keyboard. So now this is what rigid bodies are for. Sadly, unless we're making a platformer where you kick the character towards the end of the screen, that's not gonna work for us. So we need to look into using a different type of physics. Let's go on back here. And sadly, we're going to say goodbye to our player. Let's make a new one. And this time, when going into 2D, we are going to be using this kinematic body. You see this? You see what I was talking about? This is actually a ball for a good reason. And this is a little man or person or woman. Can't really tell for a good reason. That's because this is what you should use for your player. This is what you should use for the things that your player runs into. And we'll see why in a second. So I'm gonna go quickly at this. Feel free and pause for a while so that you can add everything here. Once again, I'm going to add the sprite. So when I say pause, I mean so you can catch up when I'm done with this. We're going to add a collision shape, just like before. The sprite is going to be this little one. Let's get down here. Do, do, do. And should probably center that. Now collision shape, again, we need a rectangle. We drag from there and now let's make it actually the size of the character. That'll make it better. Group them all like before and pull them down here. So we now have a kinematic body. <clears throat> and I think I told you before when we were talking about the ridge bodies, kinematic means it doesn't really take, it doesn't take physics, it will impart them on other things. Um, so for example, you are standing there. If you push against something, you're, you can think of your hand like the kinematic object or your foot in the soccer ball instance, where your foot is the thing that is being used to kick the rigid body because it's not going to do, the rigid body isn't going to do anything itself unless another outside force acts on it. Your foot is the outside force. Your foot is the kinematic body. But that also means that even gravity doesn't work on it. That's not right either. So let's go ahead and make a new script. So just like before, it's a visual script. It's taking kinematic body 2D instead of rigid body 2D. Once again, we are going to, oops, I forgot to name this. So kinematic player. Uh, there is no way to rename it now. All right, so sorry about that. You now have kinematic body 2D forever. We are going to use process again. We are going to have two variables this time though. We have speed, right click edit. We want it to be an int with initial value. Let's say five this time. You'll see why I'm making it so low. And another one called 
gravity because gravity doesn't work anymore. We need to actually make our own gravity in this game for our player. First off, let's go ahead and see how that works. So if we have gravity up here, what can we do to this? And I see something perfect, which is move and collide. Moves the body along a vector and it will stop if it collides. Perfect. So let's make a new vector too, just like before. And now we're going to say, this is gravity. So let's set it to Y. And I want to point out something interesting about Godot when it, as it pertains to 2D. Gravity is five here. Off the top of your head, that just seems fine until you realize that five should be moving up. But it is not because zero, zero starts up here in this top corner and y gets positive as it goes down and x gets positive as it goes right. So by adding two, or ten, five, adding five every cycle, that is actually going to cause the character, nope, that's, remember what I was talking about before, you have to set that to zero or else it will do this. They fell. If we said, okay, gravity, I want gravity to be negative five so that they fall down and your player just went to heaven. So that doesn't work. We need this gravity to be five so that the player goes down because we don't want the player to instantly die by going into the sky every time. Now we've gotten off, we've only caught back up to, all right, the player can fall. That's not right. Let's add one of those actions back in. So if the player presses right, the person player, not the character in the game player, presses right, we want if the speed, right, in a vector two, and the x, and then this gets set to zero. And once again, move and collide. So that is the value, is this speed. And if true, you move, right? I mean, yes, right, 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 right. They're stopping now. That's great, isn't it? Except now they are not falling because our whole gravity section has been disconnected. In order to fix this, what we need to do is, do you see this done on the condition? That means whenever this condition has finished, whether it is true or false, run this next. Move these over here. And now let's look at what all this code does. If the player presses right on their keyboard, that's true which means we need to move and collide. We're going to move and collide by moving speed, which is five, turned into a vector, which is five right and zero up or down. And we're going to move them like that. And regardless of if right has been pressed, we want the player to fall down by gravity into a vector two, which means another five. Let's see if we got this right. We are moving. That is correct. The problem is we can only move one way now. 
We. So how do you think we would move both ways? So we have a condition. We have these actions. We have done. So let's add another action. This action will check if you press left. And we will add another speed. So when this is done, we actually want this to check if left has been pressed. Let's move this out of the way again. Then we want, what do we want? We want move and collide to run going the other way, correct? So we want this to be negative speed. And then we want this to be called just like before. Let's move that down there. However, if we just do this, that won't be right, will it? Let's see what happens. I'm clicking right, I'm clicking left. This is not left. So we actually need to go into the math area. And let's look at negate. So what this little sign means is not. This will take anything that comes in and flip it, or it should. And there we go. So now what this does is says, I have this speed. I want it to be not this speed, which because of this is an integer means I want it to be negative this speed. So if speed is five, we now have negative five going into this vector. So now negative five moves to the left if left is pressed, we want it to go left. Now look at all of this that you've done. You have made your character go to the right if right is pressed. And then regardless, if it's left or if you press left, it goes to the left. And then regardless of all of that, it falls. And that is what your player does now. And if you actually even check, if you press both left and right at the same time, those move and collides cancel each other out. So it is trying to move to the left and right five units every cycle, which it can't do, which is perfect. In the next lesson, we will use all of this to get into jumping as well so that we can start making little platforms for our character to jump around on. That's it for this lesson. Thank you for watching, and this has been Sean with Space Shark Teaches.